everybody and welcome back to another episode of Northwest Craftsman. One of my upcoming projects is to make a new conference room table out of maple, but one of the biggest questions that I had about this was what is the proper finish to use on a table? You see everything from Rubio Monaco to polyurethane to an epoxy finish, and I couldn't find any really good videos that went through and did a torture test of all of these different things so that I knew for my particular application what would be best or what would be the best finish for my table. So today I'm going to go through and do a torture test with a whole bunch of different finishes. So we've got lacquer, polyurethane, Rubio Monocoat, and then an epoxy finish. And we're also going to have a control in there so that we can see how the raw wood finish does by itself. But then we're going to run it through a series, all of them through a series of torture tests, which include water, wine, coffee, bleach, bleach dilution, like for disinfection, uh, disinfecting, Windex, simple green, rubbing alcohol, vinegar, Sharpie with rubbing alcohol removal to simulate like if you've got a kid and they were put Sharpie on it, you're trying to remove it with rubbing alcohol, see how well that holds up itself. And then we have larger torture tests, which include keys, like throwing your keys down onto the surface, writing on the surface to make sure you don't get transfer going through a piece of paper onto the surface itself, like I've had happen with a couple of tables. Then we've got a fork and knife test, which is gonna be basically just taking a really sharp knife and a fork, like you're cutting through a steak on a paper plate plate and just see how well it holds up. And then we've got the hot wet paper plate test. And I swear that this is probably the most infamous and important test for me because I cannot tell you how many tables I have had a hot wet paper plate on. And when I go to remove it, the paper plate is adhered to the table. And then you're left with half the paper plate stuck to the table when you're done. It's a nightmare to clean. So I want to make sure that whatever we do, it does not do that. So, all righty, let's get going. So here are each of the finishes after applying them. You can see that there's a bunch of different types of glossiness or gloss to the finish itself. Um, all of them were able to be marked just fine, except for the Rubio Monocoat. When I went to go rub the Rubio Monocoat on, it just rubbed all the pencil away. So the pencil is actually on top on the Rubio Monocoat. Um, but all of the other ones, the pencil is embedded underneath the finish itself. So I'm gonna go ahead and document all of these from the start, and then we're gonna go ahead and start our torture test.
Alrighty, and then after letting all of this sit for an hour, let's go ahead and take everything off. I'm going to gently dab everything off with some paper towels. You will notice that in some of them, uh, the surface tension and the surface finish kind of interacted a little bit where some of them were thin and they spread out quite a bit. So here on the control, you can see there's a little bit of mixing there. On the epoxy, there was a little bit of a mixing there, but by and large, everything stayed separate. But let's go ahead and clean everything up and see how it looks. Okay, I lied, we're not quite done yet. What I need to do is actually test these test uh, spots with Sharpie and the way that I've seen people remove Sharpie from any surface in the past is to use rubbing alcohol. So I'm gonna go ahead and get a damp cotton ball with rubbing alcohol and see how well we can remove this test just by kind of swirling over the same spot on it. Alrighty, not much happened on that control. Let's go ahead and try with the Rubio Monocoat. Not bad, it's certainly a little bit lighter, but it's not quite gone and you can still easily see it. Alrighty, next up is epoxy. Alrighty, and the epoxy without even going the full 30 seconds was entirely removed, that's exciting. Let's see how lacquer holds up. And after 30 seconds, it's a little bit faded like the Rubio Monocoat, um, still there quite a bit though. Last but not least, we have polyurethane. And outside of the epoxy, it looks like the polyurethane did best. You can still easily see the test Sharpie on there. However, it does remove much easier than everything else. And I bet you with a little bit of elbow grease, we might be able to get that all the way out. Alrighty, if you're looking for the quick and easy answer as we come into this comparison, the epoxy was by far the number one winner. And then everything else kind of had pros and cons depending on what you're looking for in your finish. But on the epoxy, there was barely any damage from the fork and knife. The keys barely left left a mark, and then none of the things that were intended to stain or damage it left anything more than a smudge, and I'm pretty sure if I went through and I wiped it off a little bit more firmly without trying to delicately go in each square, I'd be able to get it back to basically the original finish. But let's go ahead and do a detailed comparison amongst all of them and look at every single stain and stress test specifically. Alrighty, so between all of them, we're gonna start with this upper left-hand corner, which is the keys stress test. Now I did slam my keys against them pretty hard. Um, I wouldn't expect you to do this on a regular basis to a table. Um, most I would expect is to drop your keys onto the table, but I would say this is probably about the worst damage you could expect. With the raw wood on the control, you can see that there's a bunch of indents left all over the surface of it. With the Rubio Monocoat, uh, it doesn't look as severe, but you can still see the pock marks all the way through. On the epoxy, if you put it in the right light, you can see some of the marks in there, but overall not that bad. And then lacquer, man, this guy took, it, took an absolute beating. I, the lacquer must be much softer than the hardwood itself because this was way more visible than even the regular just uh, raw maple. You can see the key marks all over, and in some cases it looked like it gouged all the way down to the wood. Polyurethane fared a little bit better, but on the whole, you can still see all of the damage done by the keys. That's a uh, pretty telling all the way through. So of all five samples, the epoxy wins this one. Uh, you can barely see it. Again, you have to get it in just the right light, but when you're kind of looking at it straight on, it's pretty difficult to see any of the damage to the keys themselves. It's only when you get it just right into the light that you start to see some of the damage that came through on it. Alrighty, back to the control and into square number two, we have the writing test where I used a crappy ballpoint pen on a single sheet of paper and tried to firmly write the word test three times in a row. And on this guy, it's not coming through very well, but you can see some spots where you can barely get some marking from the ballpoint pen onto the raw wood itself. So if you were to write a lot in here, you might ex expect to see more marking, but the control did pretty well, all things considered. Alrighty, into Rubio Monocoat. Um, I can't hardly see anything. There is maybe a single mark right in here. Again, I don't know if it's gonna show up that well on camera. Um, right about in there, you can kind of see it. 
Um, but overall, it fared pretty well. I would say that it was probably about on par, maybe a hair better than the control itself. Um, you got to kind of look for the writing marks. It was a little bit more durable, but overall, not bad. All righty, and then for epoxy, I don't see anything. There's, there is literally no marks that I could see from this before or after, whether it's on camera or not. Um, I don't I don't see any marks that came from the actual writing test itself. Alrighty, and then lacquer fared the worst, I think, out of all of them. You can see with the light right there, clearly test, test, test. Um, the lacquer is definitely softer than the maple on its own, which meant that it took the writing a lot more harshly um, than any of the other samples or than the control itself. And last but not least, we have polyurethane. And on this one, again, even in the naked eye, I cannot see this. It's not just a camera trick. I cannot see anywhere where the test showed through. So the polyurethane was hard enough to resist the writing um, and fared just as well as the epoxy did. Alrighty, so if I have to choose a winner between these two, we've got the polyurethane and the epoxy because they showed basically nothing at all. Coming in by a close second is gonna be the Rubio Monocoat or the raw finish, the control, because they barely showed anything. And in dead last, we have the lacquer, which showed every little bit of the writing itself. Alrighty, in the bottom left-hand corner here, we have the hot, wet plate test, which I'll admit was a little bit difficult to simulate because the paper towels that I, or the uh, t-shirts that I was able to throw on there did did not hold the heat nearly as long as a hot plate of food would. And so I don't expect that this stressed it as much as I could. I'd have to get a little bit more creative in finding a better test for that. But I'll cut to the chase and say that everything fared just fine. There was no damage on any of them. The lacquer I expected to do pretty poorly, but it did just fine. Polyurethane was fine. Epoxy was fine. Rubia Monaco was fine. Even the control was fine itself once all the water evaporated. Um, so I would say the hot, wet paper... A hot wet paper plate test did not distinguish any of the finishes from each other. Okay, in score number four here, we have the plastic fork and knife test. I actually downgraded this from a regular fork and knife test because I figured if we were gonna be using steak knives and metal forks on this, pretty much every finish was going to fail miserably. And I figured a plastic fork and knife would be much more realistic to have this, or you would get similar damage from a real fork and knife going through a paper plate. So there's a couple of iterations that we could have gone with this, but I decided to go with plastic fork and knife to see how well they did. So on the control, you can see a whole bunch of scuff marks on here. They don't look like permanent damage, but it definitely let, uh, left some indents and scuffs. On the Rubia Monocoat, it doesn't look nearly as bad with the camera, but it looks like there's more of an indentation when you're looking at it in real life. Let me see if I can't zoom in a little bit more for you guys. Yeah, so you can see it a little bit better there. So on the regular control or on the control itself, it didn't look like you got indents quite as much, but it looks like with the Rubia Monocoat, you have a little bit more indentation from the fork and knife. Alrighty, and then on the epoxy, you do see some marking all the way across it, um, especially when you hold it up into the light. It does look like the knife was able to gouge into the epoxy a little bit. Um, it's a little bit difficult to see when you're looking at it straight on, but when you get it in the light and you can see a reflection, it's definitely still there and I can feel it with my fingers. So there definitely is a little bit of gouging. It's not just marking from the fork and knife. So fork and knife on epoxy definitely left some damage. Alrighty, fork and knife on the lacquer. Um, as you might expect from the previous test, because it seems like the lacquer was softer than the wood itself, it, you can definitely get some real damage to the lacquer here. I can feel it with my fingers, I can see it uh, with my eyes, and you can see it up against the light. It actually took chunks out of it in different places, so the lacquer did not fare very well. Alrighty, and again, last but not least, we've got the polyurethane, and uh, honestly, the polyurethane did really well. Um, it was much harder than any of the other finishes or so it seems based on how it looks. There's definitely some marks and you can feel it a little bit, but if you weren't looking for it, you might miss the fact that there was damage here. Um, so overall the polyurethane did really well. So the winner for this test is the polyurethane. Epoxy was followed up in a close second. And then I think the control actually made it with third with the Rubia Monocoat being fourth and the lacquer being fifth. Um, the polyurethane just did really well in this test. It seems like it was a hard enough finish to resist the fork and knife. Okay, so as we get into the staining test, I'm not gonna go through specifically on every single one of them. I'm just gonna call out the things that stained it the worst and then we'll kind of go through with that. I'm gonna go ahead and put up a template for what the stains were again in this case, if you wanted to look at it again. Um, but we had water, wine, coffee, bleach, uh, Windex, bleach dilution solution, simple green, uh, rubbing alcohol, vinegar, and then our Sharpie test that we did there at the beginning. 
So on the control, there was definitely a lot of staining all the way across. Coffee was especially bad as it came through. It did bleed in with the Windex a little bit, so there's a little bit of staining into that square. Wine, you definitely had a stain on there. And I did get a crack on that area that I hadn't even noticed as I was going through, but the wine kind of leaked its way all the way down to the bottom. Um, and But you can see that it left the stain on top. Uh, water did leave a stain on there as well. You can see that little tiny mark Bleach left a nice blue spot on the uh, control as well, and then less of a blue spot, but still a spot for sure on the dilution solution. Simple Green left a green trace, but the vinegar and rubbing alcohol don't appear to have left much, if any, damage. You can see a little bit, at least in real life, you can see a little bit of a ring from the vinegar, but the rubbing alcohol basically shows nothing. So overall, staining damage on the control Pretty severe, would not want this to be the finish if I'm looking not to get stains on my table. Next up, we have the Rubia Monocoat. The water didn't leave any staining at all. I don't see that. Um, bleach barely, barely left a mark at full strength and the dilution solution didn't leave anything. However, the Simple Green, yeah, so the Simple Green, the Windex, the coffee, and the wine, all three left pretty severe stains. Um, not nearly as severe as the control. It definitely did a good job at protecting the wood compared to the control, but you can still see a pretty clear spot from each one of those different marks. Um, so yeah, not, not nearly as good as I had hoped, but definitely better protection than just raw wood. Alrighty, and then with the epoxy, uh, there's nothing. Like I, I've got absolutely nothing on the surface there. None of the objects or none of these stains or cleaning solutions um, did anything to leave permanent damage on the epoxy. Everything cleaned up really nicely. Um, and even just noticing it when I was applying to it, it just beat it up like it just wasn't even touching the epoxy. Just the surface tension on it was so high that everything just sat right on top of the epoxy itself. So I'm gonna call this no damage at all to the epoxy section. Alrighty, and then moving over to the lacquer, and even though it did pretty poorly in the physical damage section, I have to say I was pretty impressed with the stain resilience. Basically nothing left a stain. The simple green itself did leave a little bit of an ex, uh, extra marking on there, but I don't know if that would come off with a little bit more elbow grease. Up here at the top with the coffee, there's a little bit of a mark as well. But again, I didn't go through and try to repolish the surface of any of these guys. All of this was really just dab and wiped out of the individual squares themselves. So overall, not really that bad on the staining. There may be just a little bit of residue uh, from the simple green itself and from the coffee. Alrighty, and then we have the polyurethane, which I can say just like the epoxy, I see no evidence of damage all the way across this. I mean, maybe a tiny bit of a ring here around the simple green, but by and large, there was no staining left, even by the wine or the coffee or anything that was in there. Polyurethane really stood up to these guys well. So if I have to choose a clear winner for the staining test, I would have to say it's either the epoxy or the polyurethane because there was truly nothing on that stain. Um, if you take the Sharpie test into consideration for that kind of staining, the epoxy was by far the clear winner. Everything came off of it. Um, and there was nothing that stained it over here at all. Okay, so again, out of all of the finishes that we tried, whether it was nothing, Rubio Monocoat, epoxy, lacquer, or polyurethane, in my mind, the clear winner is the epoxy. It sustained the least physical damage and it had no staining potential whatsoever with any of the stains that I tried. The only thing that stayed was the fork and knife and the keys left a little bit of marking, but really the worst damage came from the fork and knife right here. So if you can uh, prohibit people from using forks and knives, in the way that I use them on these samples, the epoxy seems like it's gonna be the best finish overall. Now I will say that the one downside to the epoxy finish, it is that it is by far one of the most expensive finishes that you're gonna have. And the other downside is that you get kind of a fake look to it because you've got all of this coating over the surface. It's definitely a film finish, and it's large, it's thick, and it looks kind of synthetic, like you just turned your brick of beautiful maple into a piece of plastic, um, which at some level you did with the epoxy over the top of it. So if you're going for a more natural wood-like finish, I don't think this is gonna meet your requirements, but if you're looking for the most durable finish you possibly can, go ahead and use these. But again, cost is gonna be a downside. I'm gonna go ahead and put up a quick table for you guys so that you can see a quick cost comparison per advertised square foot. All of this is gonna depend a little bit on how you actually apply them, but by the manufacturer's recommendations, these are what the cost per square foot would be.
Alrighty guys, thank you for joining me today. I really do appreciate you being here. I learned a ton during this experiment and I hope that you guys learned a ton as well as about what you want to have as your next table finish. Really is a cost benefit analysis on how natural you want the wood look and how durable you want it to be. And then also how much money you're willing to spend on the finish. I know that epoxy tables right now are all the rage, but my dad kind of pointed out something nice because when we're looking to make him this table, he didn't want 10 years from now, the table to look like that fad from the early 2020s. So it's something that you need to take into consideration where a polyurethane or a lacquer finish has been around forever and they still look good, they still look sleek, they still look stylish. Um, they're just slightly less durable in different ways than the epoxy finish is. Um, even those though, you do get a little bit more of a synthetic finish. I will say that of all of the finishes um, better than the control, the Rubio Monocoat, uh, though it did stain in different ways, it had the most natural look and feel to it after the fact, just looking like the wood did originally from the very start. So it depends on what you're going for, what you value, and you're going to need to make your own decisions based on what your project needs are. So thank you guys again for joining. I really do appreciate having you around. I hope that you learned something. If you have any questions about my process, go ahead and leave it in the comment section down below. I know that no design of experiment is quite perfect. And so if you have other ideas on different finishes or different techniques that I need to try to really truly stress test these things, go ahead and let me know. Um, but thank you guys for joining. I really appreciate it. And if you like the kind of content we're producing here at Northwest Craftsman, we'd really appreciate if you subscribe to the channel and if you hit that thumbs up button for this video, say that you like the video. And then also when you subscribe, hit that little bell notification icon so that you are notified when we get new episodes. Again, thank you, thank you, thank you for being around. Really love having you, really love talking with you. Have a great one, happy woodworking.